In this video we'll go through the first half, first few questions of the June 14 International M2 paper from Pearson's. Okay, let's get to the first question. Okay, um, motion in one dimension, variable acceleration uh, should be okay. We've got acceleration given here. Let's write that down. Acceleration is 2t minus 3. And the question is to find v in terms of t. We are given an initial condition for v as well. So we need, need to uh, work with that. Okay, well, the way it works with uh, variable, uh, variable acceleration like this is displacement differentiates to velocity, differentiates to acceleration. So we differentiate. So if we're going backwards, we integrate. So let's integrate. So the velocity is equal to 2t minus 3 dt. So the velocity is t squared minus 3t plus some constant. And then we can just say when t equals naught v equals 2 so that's going to give us c is equal to 2 so that tells us v equals to t squared minus 3t plus 2 okay nice gentle easing into the paper there for the first four marks um, now part b the particle is instantaneously at rest at times t1 and t2, where t1 is the smaller of the two values. Find the values of t1 and t2. Well, this isn't really going to cause us too much, much problem, I hope. V is zero when it's at inst instantaneous rest. Um, so what that means is it doesn't. It's only just for at rest for a moment, like when we see many situations, what like a ball being thrown up in the air or whatever. So it's at rest instantaneously. So we've got t squared minus three t plus two equals naught. So that factorises clearly. T minus one equals naught. Now it says that t1 is a smaller of the two values, so that's saying that t1 is equal to 1 and t2 is equal to 2. So there we go. Um, right, now, it now says find the distance travelled by p between t1, uh, between t, t1 and t2. Um, now distance we can just find a difference in displacement here because it's not changing direction between t1 and t2 if we look at if we look at what's happening here we've got the velocity with respect to time is doing something like this and that's one and two there so the displacement will be negative. Um, I'm going to use, I don't normally use limits in these questions, but I'm going to use limits here um, just because clearly we're not, the distance is going to be the same as displacement here uh, because it's not changing direction. It's all below the axis basically. So I'm going to use limits uh, in my integration. Okay, so let's just do that. We've got the integral between t squared minus 3t plus 2 between the limits 2 and 1 dt. So that's t cubed over 3 minus 3 over 2t squared plus 2t between the limits 2 and 1. And that equals to eight over three for the first one minus two. Uh, this this bit here will be four when we put two in. So divide that by two. So it's minus six 
plus 4, take away 1 third minus 3 over 2 plus 2. Okay, now that equals, and we work that out, that equals minus 1 over 6. So that means we need to, obviously, as I've said, that's displacement, in fact. Uh, it's just move 1 over 6 backwards, so the distance travelled is 1 over 6. Okay, so that's uh, question one done. Well, not too bad start to the qu uh, paper there. Let's go on to question two. Okay, so this is a power question to do with a car being towing a trailer. Uh, the car being of a thousand kilograms and the trailer being of 250 kilograms. The car and the trailer traveling on a straight road inclined at an angle theta where sine theta equals 1 over 20. The resistance to motion is modelled as a single force of, mo ma of magnitude 300 newtons acting parallel to the road. That's to the car, so that's 300 newtons there. Uh, the resistance of motion is modelled as a single force of 100 newtons to the trailer. Okay. Um, there's a tow bar joining the car, I think, as you would, there's got to be something joining, otherwise it wouldn't, uh, the other one wouldn't move. The tow bar joining the car to the trailer is modelled as a light rod, which is parallel to the direction of motion. At a given instant, the car and the trailer are moving down the road with speed 25 metres per second and acceleration 0.2 metres per second. Okay, well, what have we just noticed here? I didn't I didn't read the whole question. It's moving unusually. It's moving down the road. So I'm going to reverse all this. I just assumed it was moving up. So we've got this thing taking the trailer. That's got a of 100 newtons. That's got resistance of 300 newtons. There's obviously going to be some driving force here. We've got weights for each of these. The weight of the trailer is 250G, and the weight of the car is 1000G. We've got the angle theta here, which we know, arc sine 1 over 20. And there's a tow bar. Now, it's um, pulling. this back and this forward. Now it's, it does talk about tension in the tow bar, uh, so that does imply somehow that the car is actually pulling the um, the trailer rather than there being a push factor to stop the trailer coming towards it. So there's no thrust, it feels like it's going in that direction. Okay, implied in a question. Right, uh, what else are we told? We're told that the speed is 25 meters per second. And the, we're told at this particular instant the acceleration is 0 0.2. So I think we've got enough to get going now. Um, we're going to apply F equals MA. Um, if I apply F equals MA to the whole system, which will be quite a reasonable thing to do, then T the T here will disappear from my calculations. So that will mean I won't have to consider it until part B. So uh, so if I apply F equals MA to the whole system, I've got the driving force pulling the thing forward. I've also got in the same direction the component of the weight of the car. I've got the component of the weight of the trailer and also the two resistances which are pulling it back 
and that equals to the mass of the whole thing. That's the total mass. So that's 1,250, the mass of the car and the trailer combined, times by the acceleration, which we know is equal to 0 0.2. Okay, so if we work with that, we'll be able to work out the driving force. Let's just do that. F plus 1000 G times 1 over 20 plus 250. Oh, I forgot the component of the weight in there. That's bad. Let's just sneak it in there. Of course it's at an angle there so that's plus 250 g times 1 over 20 also minus 400 combine that, combining those two is equal to 1250 times 0 0.2 which is 250 right okay so f um, that's equal to 50g uh, that's equal to 12.5g is equal to 650 and if I work that out it's just, uh, f is equal to 650 minus 50g minus 12.5g and if we work all that out That equals to um, thirty-seven point five newtons. Okay, um, then so that's uh, the force, and it says find the power. Well, we've got another formula here. P equals F V gives us the power. So. P is equal to, and we're talking, know the velocity is 25, so that's 37.5 times 25, 937.5. Now let's give two significant figures here because we are using G of 9.8 which is to two significant figures so we'll give our answer in that okay the mark schema is two or three as normal okay so now we we've done that that's not too bad um part b find the tension in the 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 kind of bar here we can look we now need to apply f equals ma to either this part or this part okay I'm going to do the actual trailer because there's fewer forces involved but you could equally well do the um, the car so doing on the trailer F equals MA on trailer we've got the tension pulling it forward plus 250 G sine theta yeah we know that it's 1 over 20 minus 100 equals to mass now the mass is just the mass of the trailer this time times by the acceleration which is 0 0.2 okay and that gives us um, that gives us t equals to two, the 200 uh, we've got 250 times 0 0.2 that's equal to 50 plus 100 minus the 250 sine theta which again is our third is the 12.5 G which is equal to 28 newtons to two significant figures Okay, so that is it. Question two done. Let's go on to question three.
Question three is a statics question. Um, it's going to take us a while to process the information here. It says it's freely hinged at A. So that means I'm going to split that into a, poly a vertical and a horizontal component. So I'll call that RB and RH. Um, it's got a weight of W, mark that there. There's, this is a strut or support, and that's the thing that we asked for. It says, um, let's call that T, the magnitude of the thrust um, there. And um, so it's pushing it back up basically. Um, I think that's about it, but we've got some, uh, we've got to mark on some angles here. It says this is 2.5a, so that, and that's also 2.5a, so we've got an isosceles triangle there. A, D, C is an isosceles triangle, which means the angle here, A, D, C, is the same as the, an A, C, D, is the same as the an angle A, D, C. Uh, which must be 30 degrees, because this angle here I've marked is 120 because it's uh, 180 minus 60. So the angle here is 30 degrees. Okay, so the first bit was to show that. Um, so if we take moments about A, then that's going to take out the uh, the reaction force at the hinge. So that will be pretty good. So um, let's have a look at uh, how this is going to work. This angle here is 30 degrees. So that angle here is, is also 30 degrees here. Um, so we've got both angles being 30 degrees. So we can say that the moment we, we need this distance here as well, which is 2.5a. So the turning of force of the W force is W cos 30. Okay, W cos 30 times by, well, I said 2.5, but of course that's 2A, because it's the whole rod is 4A. Okay, then we've got the component of the thrust, which is, let's just mark this on carefully, that vertical component there. Not going on, so let's rub some of this out there. That angle is 30 degrees, so it's been it's marked away from the angle there. So it's T, that component there is T sine 30. And I should have perhaps mentioned because this is component, uh, the, this angle is 30 here, that component is W cos 30, which we've got in our equation below. Okay, so that equal, but the distance now is 2.5a and it's sine 30. Right, okay, well that's w, cos 30 is the square root of 3 over 2 times 2a. Um, but two, the a is going to cancel anyway. It's equal to 5 over 2 times by sine 30, which is a half. Okay, um, so, oh, I've forgotten, obviously, we need to, it's times by the, the actual T bit there, uh, the component. So then we have, um, right, okay, so a lot of cancelling going on, the two can cancel with the two there, and we can, we've got T is equal to 4W, um, 4 of W, the square root of 3, over 5, as required. Just tidying that up. Okay, so the magnitude of the thrust, well, now that we know what T is, I think we should be able to uh, just resolve vertically and horizontally to work out what Rx and Ry is, and then combine the two for the lost for um to work out the um the 
the reaction, the overall reaction there. Okay, but we do need to be careful with our angles again. So let's just uh, rub out my W now because I don't need that. Okay. Um, now let's look at this angle here. Okay, that angle. We've got T is actually working at this angle here. Okay. But this angle here is also 30 degrees because the whole angle here would have to be 60 because we've got a right angle triangle here. So that angle's 30, you can figure it out hopefully by yourself. So for that tension here, for this tension here, the angle is 30 degrees to the vertical. That's all we really need now. So we've got, if we resolve vertically, we have R V is equal to the component, uh, the W plus, um, oh, let's get it the right way around. R V, we've also going up, which is the thrust. So that's plus the thrust T and it would have to be the vertical component of that, which is T cos 30 and that equals to W. So let's play with that. We've got RV. Now T, we already know, is for the square root of 3 over 5W. Okay. Uh, times by cos 30, which is the square root of 3 over 2, is equal to W. So that gives us RV plus the square root of 3 times by the square root of 3. That's equal to 3. So that's equal to 6 over 5w equal to w. Now this might seem a bit strange, but all that's really happened is that I kind of guessed wrong when I talked about it's actually going downwards that component. It doesn't matter, so we can just say RV is equal to 1 5 W downwards, whatever, it doesn't really matter. That will happen because it's hard to judge sometimes whether the force is downwards or upwards in these cases. Um, now, if we go horizontally, okay, that will get us uh, just the, heart, the horizontal component and the, the the horizontal component is going to be equal to t sine 30 in this case okay so the horizontal component will be equal to t over 2 and we know, so that basically means it's 2 w the square root of 3 over two, well, over five, sorry, of course. Okay, so now we've got the uh, magnitude of the, so the magnitude of the whole resultant will be equal to uh, the square of all of these. So it's two, five, the square root of three squared plus one over five squared square rooted times W. Um, that's going to give us 12 plus 1 square root times W over 5. Because we've got 25 square root of 5 on the bottom. So that's a square root of 3 over 5 W. Okay, so that is uh, question 3 done. Uh, let's have a look at question 4. Okay, so we've got a center of math question here. Um, it's a, what's happened is this is this bit here has been folded over to here to make this shape. So effectively what we're going to have is two of these triangles here on top of each other. 
and then we've got um, the rest of the shape. Now, what, the way I'm going to go about this is to split it in this way, although other, other arrangements obviously are possible. I'm going to split it like this, where this has got a centre of mass 2A, and A over, A over 2, because I know that this must be 3A here, this is A here. So if it's uniform, this must be A over 2. The centre of mass of this particular bit will be equal to of this rectangle I'm talking about now, will be equal to, well, the, the horizontal bit, that's easy, that's a, um, a over 2. The vertical bit is going to be halfway um, this length here is 3a here, so that's 1.5a, or 3 over 2, but it's added on to the a, so that's 5a over 2 is the centre of mass of this bit. Right, now, the centre of mass of this triangle here, will be equal to, well it's going to be a third of the way up, so it's going to be A further along from here, so it will actually be at 2A, 2A, because this length will have to be A, and this length will have to be A, because the centre mass of a triangle is always a third of the way along from the base, and it's already A and A, so that's 2A and 2A. Now let's look at the ratio of the masses. Let's set up a table for this. The ratio of the masses, well we've got the, let's just look at the rectangle. So we've got the rectangle, this rectangle here is a by 3a, so that's 3a squared. Okay, so that's that rectangle there, and its x-coordinate is a over 2, and its y-coordinate is 5a over 2. That's that one done. Then let's do this rectangle here. Okay, that rectangle is 4a by a, which is... Um, 3a uh, squared of course uh, and that is located at 2a times by a over 2 and then the the triangle is basically in terms of its mass is double the triangle or if you like it's the same as the original rectangle from which uh, it was kind of folded over so that will actually be double that, which will be 9a squared. Or we can call it two lots of 4.5 because it's two triangles, whatever. Um, the, the main thing is that, that they add up to 16a squared because the whole, of course, the, main, uh, the mass of the whole thing is 16a squared. And then we can just talk about the composite uh, shape is 16a squared. We've got x bar, y bar. Let's put this in as well, 2a and 2a. Okay, so um, now it wants a distance from ab. Well, the distance from ab, that's the horizontal distance. Will be equal to 3a squared times a over 2. But really, when we're looking at the ratios, we can get... Really, we're only looking at the ratios, aren't we? So let's just put this a squared bit to bed, really. It doesn't... We don't need it. So let's just go back and just say that's 3 times a over 2 plus 4 times... 2a plus 9 times 2a 
is equal to 16 a squared. So that's 3a over 2 plus 8a plus 9a no, eight, plus 18a is equal to 16a squared. Now that means that that's 26a squared. 52 that's 55 a over 2 is equal to 16 x oh dear, what am I doing x bar of course this times this this times this this times this is equal to this times this so that equals to 16 x bar so x bar is equal to 55a over 32 as required as it asked for in the question okay now let's just uh, rub out all the annotations from this now because i'm probably going to use that diagram you in the exam you probably end up having to draw this again but uh, yeah it's because uh, it won't be enough you, you diagrams going to get too noisy, isn't it, if you're doing all these things. So, um, the folded lamina is freely suspended from E. Okay. Now, looking at it, there's actually a symmetry about this line here. Okay, so... Looking at it, this distance here. Well, I was sort of, yeah, thinking, reflecting on. I didn't need all these. I can work out why bar doing all that, but there should be a symmetry along this line because it's you know uniform, and it's the same both sides of that line. So, if the center of mass of this whole shape is let's say there, it would be at fifty five over two both sides okay so it's 50 so that will be play that will be at 55 a over 32 and 55 that's across over 32 upwards because of that symmetry okay so let's get rid of that so we can see that now let's just draw my vertical line in okay so I've drawn it the vertical line in there and I've also drawn it in a large version because the diagram might get a bit small. So if we look at the vertical, this is our vertical line. We need this distance here or this distance here. Now that's going to be, remember the center of mass is um, 55 over 32a across. So that means this distance here, because the distance from here to here is at A, so that will have to be 30, uh, 55 over 32A, take away A, which is equal to 23A over 32. Okay, so that's that angle there, uh, that bit there. Now this length here, well, note, it, note that the vertical is also 55 over 32a. So basically we want, that's that distance from there to there is 55 over 32, but we want this distance, but note the whole length is 4a. So that length here will be equal to 4a take away 55 over 32a. Okay, so, and that equals to 2, 2, 73 over 32. So now we can just do our trig. Thing. So we've got the angle here, opposite over adjacent, that's the opposite side, that's the adjacent. So tan theta is equal to 23a over 32 
over 73a over 32 or tan theta equals 23 over 73 and if I work out the inverse cos of that that equals to inverse tan of that so I say hopefully that will come to the required angle and it does and because there's been no g in our calculations we'll go for 17.5 degrees three significant figures okay although again the market the mark scheme allowed seven uh, 17 but there we go it's actually allowed it on rounded answers as well okay so we've done the first four questions of the paper nothing too bad uh i don't think it was as hard so far as the previous one uh but we'll do part um five six seven in uh, another video okay so that's the end of part one